In my previous video, I upgraded my Prusa Mark II printer to the 2.5, going through the intermediate stage, two, print, two upgrades in one, and it was very successful, and I'm hugely pleased with the improvement. It's a brilliant machine, as it ever was. In the run-up to that upgrade, though, I had to print some parts, and I had a lot of difficulty printing the ABS and PETG parts because I kept getting heat bed errors, messages on the screen, and prints that failed and problems with the heat bed in general. And when I investigated it, I found that it was due to too much current heating up the connector on the board, these little connectors that looked like this, and everything was going wrong. So they had to be replaced and had to do that more than once. And then when I built the printer, I hoped uh, all that would work better because there's a better quality connector and so on, but it didn't. And I still had problems printing with these higher temperature filaments. Now, it's not a complaint about the printer. The printer is brilliant. The design is fine. It's not a design fault. It's not a problem with the board or the connectors or anything else. It's just simply a fact of life that machines like this vibrate. The connectors may come a tiny bit loose. That may cause them to struggle a bit with the current and they overheat. So we need to find a solution. And some people suggest stripping the whole board down, taking it all out, removing the actual connector and the socket, a big job. Uh, re requires a lot of uh, skill with soldering and so on and soldering the power wires directly to the board and I really don't want to do that. So I was very pleased to see a video on the channel of Nerdville, one of my favourite channels, absolutely brilliant guy who does fantastic CAD designs and great projects and he suggested using one of these, an external MOSFET driver and taking the power out from the board to this device and back in to the heat bed. It's a great idea. Now on Nerdville's channel he also showed his design for a bracket to hold the board on the Prusa printer and of course you can use this MOSFET adapter on any sort of printer with a standard heat bed like this, any kind of RepRat style printer, anything with a 12 volt heat bed. In fact they will handle higher voltages than that and you can also use them for extruders but in this case we're sorting out the heat bed and it clips on the back and the brilliant little bracket you can see here, which I'll do a close up of later, uh, just clips onto the back and is very neat to wire on very easily. So what do we need to do the upgrade? Well, first of all, obviously we need the, the actual driver unit, the module, and we have those and we can supply them. You can get them elsewhere too, obviously. Uh, you're gonna need maybe a spare connector or two. You're going to need some wire, and I use uh, flexible silicon wire of a nice big gauge so it can carry plenty of current. Cable ties are always great in these circumstances. And basic tools, side cutters and pliers to pull things out and cut them. Screwdrivers for opening up uh, contacts and so on. A couple of Allen keys for undoing nuts and bolts. And maybe some wire strippers if you have them. And you may find that you need a file or some other tool like that and some deoxidizing spray to clean out the socket if your connector has become overheated and it may have uh, affected the pins inside the socket. That certainly was my experience, which I'll, I'll show later in the video. So the first step in actually doing the upgrade is to turn the printer around, disconnect it and open the box. And when I've opened the box, I shall zoom inside and then show you how I wired up the upgrade. So I've lifted the electronics box off the chassis for easy access just to identify the parts I need to find and disconnect. There's the power for my extruder so I'll probably take that off to give some space. There's the power for the heated bed which we need to disconnect and reroute. And here's the power coming in. The lower one is for the heated bed and the top one is the extruder. So we're going to need to take this power for the heated bed and divert it but still get some power going into that socket so that it can trigger the MOSFET on the board to trigger this big MOSFET over here that we're about to fit. Having established where the leads are, I'm going to take out the uh, power for the extruder, the lead that goes to the extruder, and here's my lead that goes to the heated bed. And that's a different color to the other one because the previous one that came with the printer burnt out. So I'm going to remove that now and I'm going to disconnect the leads so that they're ready to be rerouted. Yeah. 
put that connector to one side so I can either reuse it or replace it so they're ready to go. Now over here I need to remove the power that's coming in for the heated bed. I can leave the extruder one because this one is going to go now to the MOSFET and I'm just going to undo that again. So now I have power that's coming from the power supply uh, that I'm going to connect to the MOSFET over here and then in a moment I'm going to connect power back into that internal socket so there's enough to drive this output which again will connect to the MOSFET. I need to get the wires for the heated bed removed from the electronic that box so they can the um, instead. So I'm just going to undo this bracket here and get the wires out. So here they are, ready to be sorted out later and tidied up to reroute back to the bed. I'm now starting to wire up the board and connect it to the MOSFET adapter. So here's where the power comes into the extruder and I've tapped into that line and put the block next to it, which is normally the power for the heated bed, having the same power as the extruder. This won't draw very much current now, so that's fine, it, it can cope. And then that's going to switch on and off across the board and power will come out of the former socket for the heat bed, which will be used to switch the MOSFET. So I've made up a lead with a blue and a black wire and I'm going to plug that into there. And that's now going to take a signal rather than a heavy current round to the MOSFET. So here's the MOSFET adapter and it's very easy to wire up. Here's power from the power supply that was uh, formerly connected to the board. So we're going to put the minus in there and uh, do it up where it says power, the plus in here. And then here's the lead that goes back to the heated bed to actually power it. And that'll be switched off by this unit on and off. So again, uh, check the connections, there's the plus. So now we've got power coming in and power going out to the heated bed and something needs to switch it. So I've got the two leads I just plugged into the board and these were formerly the output for the, the positive where it says plus signal wire and the ground one, the negative wire in here. So I'll do those up properly in a moment and then we'll just test it's all connected properly. Here's the completed upgrade with all the connections now done properly and safely and the MOSFET properly fitted to the frame with the wires tidied up with cable wrap and so on so everything moves nicely, the bed moves nicely and it's all ready to try. So now I'm going to give it a try and see if I can print something in ABS at 100 degrees and see how we get on. Having finished the upgrade, I've now completed the first print that I've done with ABS and the bed heated up really efficiently, much more quickly than before. And because this is the Mark 2.5 upgrade, I'm able just to squeeze off the parts that I printed, which is another one of those Nerdville brackets. Thank you very much to Nerdville for the great design. It's a really good print, very clean and smart. I'll put a little brim on it to make sure it's stuck to the heated bed, and I'm very pleased with that. The whole thing is now very neat with the MOSFET at the back looking like it was always meant to be fixed to the back of the printer on its very neat little bracket. One thing I didn't mention earlier was that these connectors that we mentioned were melting had actually melted again while I was working on this printer and uh, what I didn't show earlier was how once I'd removed it which was very difficult the socket inside was uh, damaged by molten plastic and so on. And when I reconnected it, I had a struggle to get any voltage through. So I used some deoxidizer and a small file, cleaned it all out, cleaned all the contacts. And when I plugged it back in, everything worked fine. So that's a little tip you may need to follow if you're upgrading yours and connecting the new MOSFET uh, upgrade. So I'm really pleased with that. I hope you like it. I hope you might want to do it too to your printer. It makes a huge difference, greatly improves the printing of PETG, ABS and all the other things. If you'd like one of these, we have some. 
in our quarter to six limited shop on eBay and on our website, links below. And if you liked the video and found it helpful, you may like to subscribe or watch some more that we make in the future.